Hi folks, ultimate precision, lean manufacturing, Switzerland, milling, turning, grinding, and one of the coolest integrations of a youth apprenticeship and internship program I've ever seen. Welcome to the Big Kaiser factory tour just outside of Zurich, Switzerland. Here we are. What blew me away is this is not a large facility, but there's a huge amount of production that goes on here. So they're dealing with relatively confined spaces and they've got that handled through a pretty amazing efficiency, automation, cells, and, and really good workflows. The area that we started our tour out in really surprised me because it's the internship or apprenticeship area and it's slightly separated from the manufacturing but not really and that is intentional because it matches the ethos of this company which is they treat their apprenticeships or their interns as part of the internal company so the interns are actually doing quote unquote job shop work they may be bidding work they may be creating fixtures and their customer is the factory it is a hands-on way They've got some manual machines, they've got some of the classic internship type of equipment like files and hand deburring, but then they've got state-of-the-art multi-axis CNC machines as well. And you start to really appreciate it. And it's something I really would love to see in the US more of, which is the value and the emphasis placed not only on internship programs, but also bringing them up to speed with high skilled production that matches the quality and the standards of the factory and the company itself. Here are the boring heads. So this is how I originally got to know Big Kaiser was I found them at Emo when we were trying to figure out better ways to manufacture our fixture plates. And I realized that the digital head was the solution. Card here to that video, short answer is the readout really takes out the guesswork of not only how you've adjusted it, but if it's moved as you tighten it down. So seeing one of the heads as it's being machined in its state of production, is really cool. Here is another boring head, but this one is different. This is Big Kaiser's prototype for a fully adjustable, fully closed loop integrated digital boring head. What I mean by that is your CNC control can adjust the boring head diameter. So you can have a probing cycle that would come in, measure something and automatically adjust the boring head to take a spring pass to creep up on a very tight tolerance or so long as the boring head had sufficient travel range, you could use one digital boring head to bore multiple different hole sizes. I'm a little cynical on some of the industry 4.0 jargon and slang we hear, but this to me is an actual legitimate example of amazing use of technology and in integrating that with manufacturing workflows, with CAM, with process reliability, machine controls, etc. Here is one of their fully integrated automated cell workflows. If you're wondering why they chose that color, this is actually a pretty cool story. Most machines 50 years ago were painted in these really dull, drab, dreary colors. And Heinz Kaiser, when he was buying these machines, he wanted more sunlight. He wanted more brightness. He was more conscious of that working environment, which is really way ahead of uh, his time because that's a trend that we now see today. So you have these brighter colors. You have more natural sunlight. So even though it's an unusual color, really cool reason. Again, being somewhat limited on space, they're using a vertical storage solution. So these are the work pieces incredibly high density and an incredibly small footprint. This integrates with the robotic arm that's able to feed these into a multi-machine cell where they've got both mill turn and five axis capability with a huge amount of tool redundancy. When I see something like this now, it just makes me smile because there's so much potential and so much flexibility to how you can run high volume lights out accurate production. And it had one of the coolest things that I have not seen that often in other factories, which is an optical QR reader. This closes the loop. It reduces that risk. When they set up tools offline, that QR code handles that data set. When they put the tool in, you don't have to worry about typing data in incorrectly or assigning the wrong tool to the wrong pocket because the system knows and is able to scan that code. This makes all the sense in the world to me. I absolutely loved it. And the little things, like why has nobody else thought to put a gauge length reader behind the tool mount to give you an approximate idea of both gauge length and stick out? Makes so much sense. Fast. Look at that. Backside tool.
Yeah. Look at that. Look at that grinding wheel. They talked a lot about grinding, and it's difficult to summarize just how awesome and important grinding is as a manufacturing technology, but there's so many different types. There's not just surface grinding, but here we're looking at a creep feed grinding wheel. And a company like Big Kaiser, they make collets, they make tool holders, they make boring heads. And some of that work is done on traditional milling and turning machines, including things like hard turning, but a lot of that work relies on incredibly accurate grinding systems where they're using an abrasive wheel and you can really sneak up on incredibly tight tolerances. And speaking of grinding, that's the way to make incredibly accurate threads and that's what you need to have an incredibly accurate boring head. So they talked a lot about the technique with which they use to grind and the pitch they use to grind and the screws used in the boring heads. It was really cool to be on this side of the shop because we've got all this specialty equipment, creep feed grinders, thread grinders, surface grinders, hones. And you, what you see is a lot of highly specialized, highly dedicated equipment that's really good at doing one thing. And it really was the exact opposite of the other side of the factory where you saw relatively few machines, given again the output of this facility, where they've got that ability to run lots of different parts. Those same five axis machines are able to do support parts, boring heads, the big Kaiser chip fan, all within the same machine, mix and matching as production demands it. The tool management at Big Kaiser was probably one of the most astounding things I've ever seen in a manufacturing facility. Now this takes a fair amount of infrastructure and setup to get there, but I totally get it. Between the QR codes or RFIDs, they have absolute knowledge. They're able to know what collet got taken out, where it's being used, in what machine, what its lifespan is. And when you're able to set up a manufacturing facility like that, I can't imagine you would ever want to do it any other way. The system also takes care of the easy things. For example, when inserts get consumed or checked out and they hit a minimum trigger quantity, automatically issues a PO, sends it out to the distributor or the supplier. New inserts should arrive. If they don't arrive in time, the system automatically notifies somebody. Really an efficient way to handle your purchasing. Because like Jay Pearson has talked about, there's a difference between purchasing and procurement. When I'm just buying stuff I already know I need, I shouldn't have to invest skilled labor time in thinking about it. It should just happen. Here they're showing how they'll get a, a work order ticket to set up a tool. They'll grab that tool out of the inventory. They'll use the Sperone presetter to check the run out, to check the gauge length. All of that data gets pushed up to their cloud via that QR code. Then the tool gets moved over to the machine. The machine is able to pull that information out of the cloud, confirm that things are correct, confirm it's got the right offset information, the right runout information, the right wear comp information, just amazing. The other benefit to this system is it's actually incredibly flexible. So these cabinets have no particular order to them. The system knows where everything is. So these are all tools that have already been set up and have actually already been used, but are not at the end of their life. So the system tells the operator where to put it back, you know, row E spot four, and then when a job comes up that requires that tool again, it tells them the tool's already set up, go grab it right here. Similarly, if you need a specific collet and you're not seeing one, the system can tell you there's not only one set up, but it hasn't been used in say three months. So you can just go ahead and take that one because it doesn't seem to be used. The guy was joking that they found over 150 collets in the internship program that they could pull back into the production environment. We're now downstairs in their electrostatically controlled assembly department. And they were showing us some of the test jigs that were actually specced out by the engineering team, but then built by the internship department. And these were QC devices that are used in the process of setting up and calibrating the digital boring heads. Really cool. Now we're back up in their showroom. Remember seeing that creep feed grinding wheel? This is what that's for. This is one of their dual head boring bars and they've got this V-groove system that allows course adjustments in your boring diameter size, but maintains a very rigid setup. And I found one of the coolest tools ever. It's called their Torque Fit. Now it's meant to work with the Big Kaiser line of tools. So if you have a certain size collet nut or milling chuck, this device knows the correct torque spec for that holder. And you can use a traditional wrench, whether it's a spanner wrench or a one-way bearing wrench. And the torque measurement happens in this device, which is genius. You don't have to buy specific torque wrenches for every different size and adjust them for different torque ranges. 
and you can even use this for other holders. It won't give you a go, no go output. It'll just give you the torque value. Really cool. The Big Kaiser Tour, as well as some of the other videos that we have coming up, were part of this trip with the NTMA, National Tooling and Machining Association. So it was really cool. The format was we got this kind of inside peek, and then the companies would take you to their showroom or their demo room and give you a really good in-depth technical presentation that was really a two-way street. We could ask questions. We could look at the technologies that they are both have at market right now, as well as some of the stuff that they're working on, and a unique chance to really see some cutting-edge tools, pun intended. Here, we're looking at one of the really cool dampening bars from Big Kaiser. So these have a tuned mass dampener that's able to offer an incredibly rigid setup despite a really long gauge length. So here they did a demo showing how aggressively they could cut with a traditional extension and then how much harder they could push the tool when they switched it, otherwise apples to apples, but switched it over to a dampening bar extension. They also had a preview up of the automatic boring head where they're showing an iPad and how you can make adjustments either from an app or from your machine control. Really amazing.